All right, how you doing? Good to see you. Rudism here. Hope you're doing well over there, wherever you are. Um, so <laughs> there's been a little bit of a gif going around the internet recently of uh, me playing D.Va in Overwatch with a pair of flight sticks. Um, I managed to get a sweet play of the game. That was what we wanted to get, and I'm glad we got that we got it. I'm going to cut together a little video of that stuff later on, but um, in the meanwhile, a lot of people have been asking me how I set up something like that. So I thought I'd make a cheeky wee video and uh, show you guys how it's all done. So we'll go through it step by step. First off, you're the equipment you need. First thing, a couple flight sticks. Pretty important. Um, so these are SciTech ST90s in, in particular. They're, uh, you know, not the most extravagant flight stick out there. They're about $30 a pop, New Zealand dollars, which I think equates to about 20 bucks American. Um, they've got about three buttons per stick. So you've got a trigger there. You've got your left button and your right button. Nothing particularly fancy. The small button's up the top. Um, I haven't been able to unlock their potential yet. They don't seem to register, but we're going to work on that for later. Um, so yeah, turns out three buttons per stick is, is the bare minimum of what you need, which is good. So we've got our sticks. Another thing you'll need is a program that will transfer or that will translate those uh, stick controls, those stick actions into keyboard and mouse inputs. So um, I use a little program called Xpatter, which is, I mean, I can sing Xpatter's praises all day. They're amazing. Costs about 10 bucks. Um, there are free options out there that might work as well, but I found that Xpad is like incredibly versatile. It works with pretty much everything you want to use it for. So um, we're going to go step by step through that now. So here's Xpad. Um, works nicely. So you can see there's two tabs open here. So each of these tabs represents one of our uh, flight sticks. So I believe this open tab is for the left stick. I hope I got that right. We'll see. So what you want to do first off is click on this little yellow area. Click new to create layout. And that brings up this wee screen. So in here is where we can define um, all our different controls. And basically, you know, all the motions and buttons we'll be pressing on the stick. So first things first, we'll go to sticks. Um, so if you're using sort of a 360 controller or something like that, you can, you know, this is where you define all your joysticks. So in here, we'll enable this stick. And it's going to ask us to put in, to input left on the stick and then up on the stick. I think that worked all right. Yep, there we go. So now that that's put in, you can see if I move forward on the stick, it'll go forward, back goes back, left goes left, right goes right, which is very nice. Um, so you've got the stick, and now time for the buttons. So we open this little tab here, and in here we can just press all the buttons we want. So trigger, uh, left button, right button, easy. It's all very nice. Now another wee thing you can do in here is rearrange these buttons. Just It's just visually, it's nothing um, that will affect gameplay. But I like to rearrange these buttons so that they create some kind of logical layout, you know, relative to where they actually are on the stick. So, you know, we've got our stick on the bottom, buttons there. It's all very nice. You can also add an image in the background here instead of all this pink stuff if you want. Um, these sticks are pretty basic, so we're not going to worry about that today. That's all right. Now, that's one stick done. So we're going to have to do this for the other stick as well. But um, also be sure to save, of course. So we've got one stick. And now we'll go with the other stick. So we do the exact same as we did before. Um, so we enable this stick. We go left and up. All working. And then we got uh, three buttons. Cool. And we'll do a bit more rearranging. Just like this. And that's all lovely. Okay. Cool. And we'll save that too. So now you can see that whenever we do these inputs, they show up here in this little gray panel. So it's in this panel that we can actually set our buttons and define what we want them to be. So in, uh, we'll start with the left one first. So the way that I set it up for Diva and Overwatch is I use the left stick for moving as well as left shift, Q, and shields, which is right click on a, on a mouse. And then the right stick I use for mouse movement or like looking around um, for actually shooting, right click, um, and then jumping and E, which we don't need to use as Diva. But if you want to play another hero with flat sticks, it's a good way of doing it. So, uh, first sticks first. So we've got forward on the stick here. So we're going to click on this and go W. We're going to click here and go A. And this is S. And this is D. So there's your WASD right there. So we can move around now, which is nice. Um, we've got our trigger, which we're going to make a right click. So right click for shields. Oh, you can see it's already working there. <laughs> Um, so we've got this button here, which is going to be left shift. Um, we just So sometimes it'll expect you to hop, like do like a shift plus another key. So that's why this thing's still open here, but we can just get rid of this. And that'll just be left shift. 
um, and we can click here and go Q. All right, so that's one stick sorted out. So we're gonna give this uh, setup a name. So we'll just go Overwatch, um, I'll say Diva, not Diva. I don't like putting full stops in my things. We'll go Alpha Left. Cool, and now for the right stick. So the right stick handles mouse movement. Now, the way that I play Diva in Overwatch, I tend to invert my, my Y axis. You know, some people like me tend to invert their axes on joysticks as well. I'm kind of weird like that. So when we move up on the stick, we want Diva to look down. So these uh, four buttons here on the outside of the whole sort of mouse area, these are your mouse movements. So we can go down here and for down, we can go up on the mouse and then for left and right, it's just plain old left and right. So now if we look, if you look at the mouse over here in the sort of right hand side of the screen, if I move the joystick up, it'll go down, down goes up, left goes left, right goes right. It's already controlling the mouse, which is very nice. Um, and then for these extra buttons, we've got uh, space for the left button, uh, E for the right, and the trigger is right click. Of course you can, oh whoops, that's left click. You can uh, rearrange these if you like as well, it's no problem. Cool, and we're gonna call that Overwatch Diva Right. Excellent. So, those are the basic stick setups. Um, so next thing we need to worry about is uh, mouse settings. All right, so uh, I just had to dig around into some settings and figure out what my actual uh, mouse setup was, just in terms of sensitivity and that kind of thing, because uh, one of the downsides of this whole setup is that the mouse can be really touchy if you don't have quite the right settings. So it's pretty important to get it right. So I'll show you what I've got, and then you can feel free to like tweak things to your own taste. Um, typically, you know, there will be a bit of changing involved just to get it the way you want, but we'll, we'll go like this. So, um, on the right stick where you've got your mouse, um, there's a little toolbar, a little spanner icon there. You can click on that and go settings, and then it brings up stuff like your, uh, dead zone for the stick and all those kinds of things. So for the right stick specifically, um, I set my dead zone to be basically non-existent. I like to make it really sensitive. That's just me personally. Um, you can see my mouse is moving there. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I crank my dead, set, dead zone all the way down. You can make it higher if you want as well. You can make it almost the entire thing. Um, yeah, you can you can do a lot with it. Um, crank it all the way down to zero anyway. Uh, diagonal size is just, you know, which region of the circle uh, will register as both inputs, so to speak. So, um, you know, I just tend to keep it at 45. It's just a, you know, even spread. Um, and then we go into mouse settings. So here is the very important part. So you don't really want to look at this stuff here, but in the center, this emulation speed, um, you see that you've got a uh, horizontal movement speed and a vertical movement speed. Now I like to keep them linked together. Um, you can see I've both got them set to 23. That's typically how I like to have the, uh, that's how I like to have XPadder set up the mouse. Um, so that's all well and good. Um, and in game, we'll just save that there. In game, uh, you also have to worry about your sensitivity settings as well. So if we go to mouse control, um, I typically have my sensitivity around 40, roughly. Um, you don't have to worry about invert look because we already took care of that in the uh, in the game settings or in the expat settings, I should say. And because we're, it's not detecting things as a controller, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff here. So the only thing you really need to look at is the sensitivity. I keep it around 40 and, uh, you know, it makes it you know, relatively easy to move around. It's still a little bit slow. I think once I get a better hang of playing D.Va, I'm gonna end up, like, making it a little bit faster. But I think practice makes perfect. So, you know, you can see we can fly around, we can drop an ult, um, we can shoot people once I get out. Yeah, there's a lot of things we can do with this. Our only problem with this current setup and the sticks I use is that I can't reload, so... Um, maybe on the sticks you've got at home, you'll probably be able to do that, which would be nice. If you can, then I'm very jealous of you. <laughs> But um, yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do with this. Um, this isn't the only uh, setup that I plan on using with these uh, with Overwatch, by the way. I've got some more ideas. The uh, hero that I'm looking at right now is Zenyatta. So uh, I plan on having something very interesting for him very soon. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you've got any questions about the setup or if there's anything else you want to know that I might have missed out, feel free to send me a message on Twitter um, or come say hi on Twitch. Feel free to do whatever you like to get a hold of me, because um, I, I like to think I'm pretty uh, easy to get a hold of. So yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope to see you again in the next video.